Hello, and welcome to day 29 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting we're doing today is by Alexander Helwig Wyant, and it is called The End of Summer. Alexander Helwig Wyant was a first generation tonalist, and uh, I do have a, a little biography from him from the site Artsy, and I'll put a link to this since there's some nice uh, zoomable. Uh, images of his work uh, there. So uh, here's his bio. Hudson River School and tonalist artist Alexander Wyant was drawn to the wilderness, especially dappled clearings at dusk, saturated with silver light. And his late work moved to a level of conceptual abstraction and spirituality that placed him at the forefront of modern American painting. Wyant earned early acclaim as a painter of descriptive and tight Hudson River landscapes. But by the mid-1870s, he evolved to a more gestural and expressive style of toneless landscape, influenced by George Ness and innovations from Europe. He often painted in the Catskills, where he sought out intimate views of abandoned farms and panoramas of clouds over distant valleys. His work is filled with exuberant paint handling that verges on complete abstraction, with forms flattened into patches of vibrant color and details transformed into flecked paint marks. Um, you can see the painting we're doing today. It's actually uh, a neat little painting, uh, or it could be a big painting. I don't know how big the original is, but uh, um, very, uh, very strong contrast. This painting with the foreground is uh, very, very dark, and uh, there, therefore makes the uh, the sky and the uh, valley in the back seem much, much lighter in contrast. Um, this is a painting I've had around in a, a folder for quite a while, and. Uh, was certainly at the top of my list of paintings that I wanted to do for this project. Um, I believe also that uh, Alexander Wyant was one of the people that may have coined, either coined the word tonalism or was a ma major proponent of that term to, to describe this style of painting. Uh, I'm not really clear how big of an influence that George Ness had on him, but um, it's good to remember that uh, in this period, say from 1880 to 1910, George Ness was widely regarded as the greatest landscape painter, uh, as certainly American landscape painter that had ever lived. And uh, uh, there was awards given out with uh, his name on them, the, uh, the George Ness Award uh, for Excellence in Landscape Painting was uh, given away, given out for quite a while. It's really, a, it's about time for there to be a major reappraisal of the significance of the work of George Ness and the other tonalists like Alexander Wyant. Um, it's, it's long overdue and it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this project is to bring more awareness to tonalism and to the work of these amazing artists. Uh, I can see we're getting close to the end. This one went pretty quick. Uh, thanks for joining me for day 29, and we'll see you tomorrow for day 30 of 100 Days of Tonalism. If you'd like to see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz. Meanwhile, stay out of trouble, and we'll see you tomorrow.